All right, guys, so grab a chair, take a seat. We're here in front of the fireplace, our digital fireplace. I've added to the experience this time. I've actually included the sound effect of the uh, fire crackling. So I hope that even pulls us more into this virtual hangout that we're doing here right now online. So cool. So um, again, another full day of just incredible emails, comments, stories. I mean, the length of comments and the stories and all the openness you guys are sharing with me. It's, it's a lot. It is a lot to take in and I am reading it all. I want to let you guys know that I can't respond to everybody's comment. I just have a lot of things that I need to do. But I want to let you know that if I do heart your comment here on YouTube, I've read the entire comment. Okay, so I just wanted to let you know that once in a while, some comment or some suggestion you guys have will just kind of pull me in and you guys really sort of persuade me to uh, reply to you. So I will reply to some of you. But I hope those of you that I can't reply to because there's just so many hours in the day that you don't think that I'm not I'm not interested in what you're saying or that I don't care. I really do. So hopefully when you see that heart icon, just translate that into Jesse read my comment. Okay. And I do appreciate your comment. So I want to make sure you guys are wearing that. So today's video, I want to talk about something that I'm really going through right now in terms of it's a struggle. It's not something that I've figured out like everything else in life. <laughs> and it's about trusting myself. And, um, and I don't mean in terms of just, uh, well, let me explain that. Most of our lives, we kind of go through the system, whatever you want to call that, you know, public education, society, anything you want to call that. And I just have this constant theme that was drive, driven into me all my life, which was that you can't really trust your own experiences. You can't really trust your own instincts. You can't really trust what you think is real. You have to just default to the experts. Let the experts tell you what reality is or what this is or what that is because you know that video that i just put up yesterday about how i'm able to stop my pain by accepting it i think if i would talk to a lot of doctors they would tell me that that's well it's i don't know what that is but that's not how it works right i think a lot of doctors would probably disagree mostly because their world revolves around you know medication uh, pills surgery they have a different protocol for how they look at solving medical problems right so i think while they are experts in that particular field, I'm the one inside of my body, right? I'm the one inside of my brain. I'm the one that has these experiences and feels these things and has seen proof of the results right here. So this is one of these things that's really, you know, shaking up my world. I feel like my whole box is just getting shook up right now. And uh, all of this faith that I had in experts and trusting intellectuals and doctors and all these people that we always think like, well, they have all the answers. So if we need the answers, we'll just go to them. And it kind of trains us to stop listening to ourselves and trusting ourselves. I'm not saying we have all the answers, but we can experiment on ourselves. We can, you know, uh, try things out. We can listen to different people's perspectives. We can talk to each other directly, me to you. You know, like that's why I wanted to put that, that video yesterday. I am obviously not a medically trained doctor <laughs> for this thing from it. But does that mean I can't share with you what my experience has been and what's actually helped me reduce pain like proven and i saw a lot of your guys' comments yesterday a lot of you have had the similar experience i know i'm still waiting for some of you who are going to try that out for the first time but a lot of you said that it really reduced either your anxiety your depression or i even had one of you guys that had a, a toothache as well um and it totally took away your pain as well so you know I, I hope you guys trust me i'm not lying to you this is really something that actually has done it for me and i trust those of you that are telling me the same thing that it's actually working for you so this is a result of us trusting ourselves though right and not just going to well it, yeah it kind of worked but i don't think that it's actually a real thing so i i don't want to share this one with anybody i don't want to tell anybody about this because you know doctors probably would think this is quack medicine or something and i shouldn't really say it I think that's a really foolish thing to do. And now I'm starting to like learn how to trust my own experiences and instincts and gut much more than I ever have in my entire life. And it's very scary because it's like basically learning how to walk for the first time. It's like basically the first time I felt freedom, you know, in an interesting way. And freedom is not just the, the freedom to just run around and do whatever you want. Freedom is really about taking responsibility and knowing that like you are responsible for your own health and you need to do what you have to do to heal yourself and not outsource that to anybody else. If you do need to outsource it to somebody, make sure that you are on the same page and you understand exactly 
why they're giving you what they're giving you, why they're prescribing what they're prescribing. I'm not saying you can't build trust and you should build trust with those that actually can help you. And there are great doctors out there. I don't want to be harping on doctors here. In fact, one of the doctors I've gone to locally here, one of the best, most kindest, you know, sweetest guys, and he's just in an urgent care. He's just this local urgent care doctor. Incredible guy, right? But he's still in that world of pills, surgery, right? The kind of traditional things that they got trained in how to prescribe. So if I went to him and said, you know, is there a way that I can use my mind to heal this toothache? I think he would laugh me out of the room. I just don't know. It, it Maybe it's possible that he might have a little experience himself with that. And maybe you'd say, you know what? I've heard some of that stuff can kind of work, you know, but his whole business model is not meant on giving you a prescription to go meditate. <laughs> You don't need to get a prescription to meditate. You don't need to have permission from a doctor to do this kind of stuff. You've got permission right now to do it. So trusting my own experience, um, trusting my own mind, um, you know, and having this, this kind of like radical evolution happening to me over the course of the last few weeks and having all these like revelations and new thoughts and ideas. Like I feel like I now have suddenly ADD. I don't feel like I ever had this before, but it's sometimes even hard for me to concentrate on talking to people because like I'm talking to them, but I'm like thinking about a completely separate subject and I have to go, no, no, come back down to the conversation. I'm like retraining my brain how to be more present with people and, and and basically dedicate my time to having some just daydreaming time to just try to allow allow myself to capture and just explore some of these revelations ideas. So, you know, again, I have, I have sea legs right now. I'm wobbling and I'm still kind of unsure about where this is all going to take me. And one of the things that's really pushing me through this confusion is the coronavirus situation. Um, I'm really having a hard time finding the truth right now. Some of you guys probably feel the same way. I'm hearing everything from it's a real thing. It's a, a weaponized uh, virus that was released on, t on purpose. It was released accidentally. Uh, you know, it's a 5G, um, what do you call it? It's a, um, you know, people are just reacting negatively to a new technology that's being released on the earth and our, our cells are just reacting to it and we're misdiagnosing that, calling it a virus. I've also heard that this is, um, uh, you know, created by, you know, people that want to put vaccines in every single, everybody. And this is basically a hoax. So, and how much proof is there for any single one of those? I got to start looking into it. That's what I'm starting to realize is that I can't just turn on the news and just, well, what did the news tell me was true? Oh, they said that? Okay. That's what I'll believe. That's what I'm trying to stop right there. Cause that's what I did a lot of my life is just look to the experts to say, what do you guys think I should think? What, what should I believe about this? So rather than doing that, I'm going to do research. I'm going to find out because at the end of the day, I have to take responsibility for my own health and my own safety. I can't rely on our experts to do that for me. I don't know if you guys are aware if you've followed some of the stuff that's been going on, but our health experts, you know, World Health Organization, CDC, kind of like the big wigs on planet Earth that are their one job, if you say that's one thing for them to do, is to protect us from these kind of things, didn't protect us. This thing is pandemic. It went all over the world. They didn't warn us. In fact, the WHO, I think in January, I saw one of their tweets. They said that they had no um, evidence that it was human-to-human -human contact, which could have been their best guess at the time. I'm not saying it was malicious, uh, but they also, uh, up until a couple of weeks ago, along with the CDC, was telling people not to wear masks. Did they make a difference? And now they're saying, yes, actually, we should wear masks. So I'm not, I'm not expecting perfection from people, and that's not certainly not what it is. But I also have to realize that, like, you can see how your experts have been wrong, right? Whether it's just, you know, they didn't have all the answers or it was, you know, some other intent. Um, they had some sort of intentions for why they wanted to mislead or maybe lie. I'm not saying they are, but we have to sort of open up all the possibilities and we can't just go to the one thing to say, well, they wouldn't lie to us. They wouldn't mislead us. They wouldn't be incompetent, right? WHO, big people, right? They got, they got a handle on this. They got it all in control. They are, it is run by human beings. I don't know if you've ever met a human being before, but human beings are not immune to corruption and they're not immune to confirmation bias and they're not immune to groupthink and getting kind of into the whole, you know, well, I don't want to be the only one that's disagreeing among my colleagues, right? We know that this is true. So when we just place faith in our experts, in our sort of, you know, institutions, just because they exist and they call themselves, we are the guardians of health or we are the guardians of this, you're putting yourself and I'm putting myself in a really dangerous position to just not trust myself, right? And not do my own research and just trust them and hope that they're going to take care of everything for me. And at the end of this, it's really about, like I said, freedom. You know, this is what freedom is. And I, I'm starting to realize this, you know, I have uh, gotten a little bit into cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and, and that kind of thing. 
And when I first bought some Bitcoin, this is an example of what respons- what freedom really is and how it's really the, the flip side of responsibility, how that's the same exact thing. Freedom is responsibility. So back in 2013, when you had to buy Bitcoin from going to a CVS and picking up the MoneyGram red phone and calling it in and, and getting that, that's how you used to do it. You couldn't just do it on the internet. Um, I would, you know, I'd buy it. I'd buy some every other day. And then at some point I started to try to send it or buy things with vendors online. And I remember one time I tried to buy something in order to send your Bitcoins to somebody else, you have to have their actual address. Well, I went to their website. I copied what I thought was their in full address. And I think I was sending 300 bucks. It was a lot of money and boop. And then I emailed them. I said, Hey, I sent you the 300 bucks. Can you send me the, the item? And they say, no, we never got it. I was like, Oh, you're scamming me. I, I knew this might have happened with Bitcoin. Okay, I got to go figure this out. So with Bitcoin, you can actually go to a public ledger and see every single transaction. So if you put in your address for your wallet, your online wallet, you can actually see all the transactions that you've sent and received. And it's all there publicly for anybody to look up if they want to. So I look it up. Turns out I missed one digit on their wallet. So I said, go to them and I go, well, listen, you're right. I, I missed one digit. I didn't get it to you. Um, you know how I can get that back? I know you didn't get it. I now can see that it wasn't sent to you. Where, can I do anything about that? And they replied, pretty much kind of laughing at me going, you know, there's really no such thing as like an insurance plan with Bitcoin. It's not like there's no FDIC in this industry. There's no like, whoops, this got taken out. I shouldn't have got taken. Can you help me out? You have to take responsibility for who you're sending your money to. So if that means you need to double, triple, quadruple, 10 times, check that address before you send it to them, or maybe even just send them 10 bucks first, you know, small amount, and then interact with them and say, did you get that $10? Cool. All right, I'm going to send you another 90, another 100, and you slowly send them, you know, until you get to the 300, so you're not putting all your risk at one. This is what personal responsibility looks like. There is no safety net. It's really up to you. You have to take that responsibility. So that was a huge wake-up call for me of what responsibility really is because with the banks they give you that hey fdic insured don't worry about it you everything is completely uh, guaranteed gives you that reassurance right but you are in their system you are putting your money in their accounts right so there is a trade-off for that so you think that's your money and in a way it is but it's also controlled by them right because if they can if they don't want you to have your money they have the ability to do that. Not with Bitcoin. There's nobody that can stop you from actually withholding your Bitcoin. But of course, that also takes responsibility to be able to back up your, your wallet to a thumb drive and make sure you have access to it. And, you know, there's a lot of things you do. We don't need to get into all the specifics. But I'm just kind of pointing out the difference between freedom and, you know, or just taking, taking responsibility means that you can have freedom. But it's not just skipping around and, and, you know, sunshine and lollipops. It is a lot of work and a lot of, um, it's a heavy burden that you have to accept. And so for me, all right now with trusting my instincts and trusting myself and my experience, that is the sort of part of my responsibility that I'm trying to embrace and figure out how to deal with it. So I'm moving forward with that and seeing where it takes me. So let me know, guys, what you think about this. Um, any experiences you want to share, anything that's related to this topic, anything about, um, I'm really more curious also about your coronavirus perception right now. Like, where are you guys with it? What do you think is going on right now? What's your best guess? Um, If you've done very good research and you think you have a very compelling case to help me get further along with my research, post anything you can below to help me out with that. Because I would love, I'm not a sort of, well, I'm not going to look at that. That's a conspiracy. I'm not... Right now, I'm kind of open to it all, right? Because I want to make sure that I'm not just going to a confirmation bias and going, that looks weird. I don't even want to look at that. No, I want to look at everything. I really want to give everything a good shot and see, you know, what starts to make sense for me and what actually starts to resonate as the truth. Because I have this feeling, gut feeling, can't prove it to anybody, that if I can, if it feels right in my gut, like in my heart, like actually more of a feeling, not in my brain. And that's where I was most of my life, always up in here in my brain. But if I can feel something, I think there's something to it. I really do think there's something to it. Um, and so that's where I'm trying to go right now with all this stuff. Could be completely wrong. I'm open to that as well. This could be just a phase that I go through. So I'm trying to be as open as I possibly can to all these, uh, these possibilities. So thank you guys so much. Please leave your comments um, and questions and experiences below. Uh, I'd love to read them. So um, 
Be safe and be well.